Good morning. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I'm going to be trying something new. It's going to be a combination of the things I love, but it's going to be new. And before I begin, I want to thank uh, Anna Falsetta, who does this work. I've seen it on Instagram, and uh, it's just a wonderful mixed media uh, addition. It could be after some practice, which I'm going to use this older, uh, as you can see, uh, book four. Uh, I see it as looking beautiful on uh, tucks or tags, etc. But I thought I would uh, try it today because I wanted to do a little experimenting. I have, uh, I have my watercolors out. Uh, these are particular. This is not a very full palette, but this has colors in it that I absolutely love, particularly this yellow-gray. Yellow-gray, and it truly is a wonderful background color. I got my um, Gansai Tombi uh, starry, starry colors. They are uh, the most beautiful, vivid uh, metallics that you might want. And I got my um, uh, palette containing uh, Daniel Smith colors. Love those Moon Glow and Mayan Dark and just lovely, lovely background colors. So, let me, let me do something I wanted to do before I open up and we, uh, and we plunge in here. And believe me, this is going to be a plunge. Um, I am going to be adding, of course, some uh, antique uh, dictionary paper, some uh, script to my piece because it wouldn't be Carol without it. So, I'll get back to this uh, in a few minutes. So, this was tucked away under a pile of things on my uh, my arting table, and look what I found. I remember doing that cover, and the back didn't need a cover, but it got kind of dusty because it was laying there for a good three years until I came to. So. In uh, the beginning of uh, 2018, I uh, combined um, collage and, uh, and watercolor. This is a piece of, uh, these are pieces of uh, collage. This one is a piece of collage. This is that, and this and this is a carol added and carol's leaf, etc. And then I wanted to try something out of the box, so I did this. I experimented with a, uh, a white pen, and I listed the, uh, the colors that I had used to achieve this. But then came this one. Now, those of you who know me well know that I just love to cut open a hole on a paper so that you can see into the next side or something that you deliberately put behind it. And so I had these bits of, uh, of collage tucked away and I thought, ha ha, loved this. This is a piece of collage also. So I used this piece of collage to use watercolors to give me a, uh, a background. This is uh, something that I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be sharing with you. This is pencil, but the colors used. And then, of course, once is never enough. So uh, I used this uh, stencil that I had and uh, I took the time to, uh, to cut it and I put on my background. And here is some of that Gunside Tombow uh, gold, and you can see it's a rich and beautiful color. And then I traced it onto this page and colored all of this in using watercolor as a background and some uh, pencil. 
And here's one that uh, I wanted to try greens and I wasn't too happy with it. As you can see, I mustn't have been holding my mouth right that day. But uh, these are the, uh, the sh my Schmenke watercolors that um, uh, to produce these this type of color. And this is uh, watercolor through a stencil. There's a trick to that. Not too much water. What's next? Ah more practices uh, and some of the ones on the tip have uh, as you can see have iridescence that's the gun side tombi uh, white white gold and it was just a uh, a practice and a, and a doodle and then this one this is the road that we're kind of going to be going down uh, today a major piece of uh, collage. Everything else is watercolor, uh, doodling, and here's the list of the watercolors that I employed, employed there. Oh, here's another one. Well, this one is one of my last pieces of vellum. I have since purchased some to have them again. Uh, as you can see, it's a flip out with washi, which I hardly ever use. This is um, gouache instead of regular watercolor. And I added this so that it could be open and make dimension. This was such fun doing. And wouldn't this be lovely in a journal? And here I had this old uh, picture frame so I, uh, oh, and these fine lines are, uh, I'm going to employ them again because uh, they're wonderful. These are from uh, stamps that I got, uh, oh, quite a few of them. They will have them in, um, on uh, uh, Tuesday morning before it went out of sale. And I used this picture that I had been holding forever, and this I tried to copy, give the idea onto this page, and... So, here we have a double sp a spread with a double spread with a uh, a piece of vellum. I was experimenting. That was in uh, May uh, 18. More of the use of watercolor. This is stencil, but this is negative stencil. This is the removal of the color, removal of the watercolor. Uh, quite easy to do. And just some circles with some uh, use of colors, all of the colors that I used. Mayan black, uh, blue dark. I have to remember that because that is a lovely color. Just lovely. And this. This was a fave. I really, really had fun doing this. Uh, all of this is... Um, shades of the tans and naturals that you can only get in the cheapo five dollar boxes of gouache that you find in uh, Walmart and Michaels and so forth and some beautiful pieces of paper that I had that I wanted to save <clears throat> have a little drink here I was experimenting with new my new paints my new watercolor paints my Mission Gold, and this is that um, yellow gold background. I didn't do too much doodling. I was really just having a practice page there. Here's one again in which I was working on uh, background and some uh, um, brushwork. This is a piece of uh, collage that was added on. And here I go again. Couldn't resist it. Cut into this here, and here, and here, and here. And uh, I used a, an X-Acto knife for that. And I'm thinking that this right here is a stamp. I'm not sure whether I have it. It's, I'm sure I still have it if, if it is a stamp. These are, uh, of course, 
um, vines that I added and Mission Gold. There's the yellow gray. Green is yellow, olive green, hooker's green, and burnt umber. Uh, and pages glued together. This was uh, a conglomeration of collage bits, a flower that I made, uh, carol leaves, uh, and the schmanky watercolors that I used. And here is a uh, uh, much newer than this paper, but still lovely and using um, watercolors through a stencil on the background. And then today, I'm going to use the rest of this book for, uh, for practice. In fact, if I like something so much, I think it might look good in a journal, I'll just uh, remove it and uh, use it. So, let's think about, before I get to that, and I just put the piece of uh, uh, wax paper in there so the, water, the color doesn't, the, the water, the damp doesn't go through, although it usually doesn't. I've had these, these are uh, Jane Davenport uh, watercolor pens, and I've had them for ages, and I don't even know, because they've been facing in the same direction, whether or not they're happy, I have no idea, but I wanted to try and see what we have here. Why not? Let's... Let's try magenta. Let's try magenta. Well, that one is still very much alive, isn't it? Remove these and put on these. Meteorite is the color. Is it going to do anything? Let me give it a squeeze. No, meteorite must have some uh, must have some metals in there. So that's understandable because of the uh, contents of the formulation. Siren. Let's try and see if we have anything going in Siren. See if the squeeze helps. Oh boy! Squeezing helped. Okay, I got a little carried away with that squeeze. Let's put that out of its misery and see what color we have under there. Okay, and what's nice about it is. those beautiful points. And I know in her, now that she's in business, uh, I know that her new products are probably uh, quite wonderful. You might, uh, you might consider looking them up. Oops, now let's not get too carried away here. Oh. Never know that these might come in handy. Just a little squeeze here. Yes. Pretty. Well, I'm going to make uh, put these in my uh, keepers category, I guess. And here's another one. Moonbeam. It's beyond me what that's going to do. tells us that these still have some life in them. Let's 
so let me put these aside because I'm not going to be use them, using them. I want to do uh, watercolor with watercolor. And so, here's my water, my brushes. Do I have a plan? Absolutely not. I am truly planless. Let's see about, I'd like to just uh, get some background going there. Let's try, let's try some, uh, some Moon Glow with a, uh, a square watercolor brush because it does put on the, uh, it does put it on. And I like this. I'm always a person that likes to use what was on the palette. Just pull it together and see what we get. Okay, that's not going to uh, work out too well, so let's get in here to the, uh, oh, I'm going to need to add some more Moon Glow. Here for the ah uh, yes oh my pretty pretty background let's try some undersea some undersea. more down here. More water. Let's go for a little bit of blue here. Let's put some sky up in here. refill, get my tubes out. I have to refill this. But that's a good thing to know. And I don't mind that these globules of, uh, of paint are coming out. Not at all. And let's go over this way. Anything else I want there right now? No. This has to go this way so that I remember that to get the correct color. And now we're going to hit the yellow gray. And that, that really spoke for itself, didn't it?
love the way it went from dark to light. And a little bit more down here. Oh, it does pretty things with this uh, with this blue. Let's see if this is dry yet, if it's going to move. Yes. All gone. All gone again. Let's rub it in a little bit. use some softness let's use some softness now yeah. this is the uh, shell pink Definitely needed some of that to soften things up. Let's go over here now. Well, we have a background with some color that we can uh, we can seriously ignore. Let me. Uh, that over there and let's leave this open so that the colors will dry. Do I want to use this again? Hmm. Not too much, uh, just a little bit of uh, rolling here, just a little bit, not too much at all. Now, I'm going to uh, set this back here. And let's think about this. I'm thinking a strip maybe down here. This is rag paper from the uh, late 1700s. Thank you, Rachel, from Roxy Creations. This is almost impossible to uh, get this pulled off here because it is, uh, it's rag paper. Rag being the operative word. And I love this bit and I want that natural darkness to show because it works very nicely with this, uh, with the colors that we have here. that I had somewhere. They were done in 2019. I was a busy girl. Uh, this is, of course, the original. Uh, some, a good lot of, uh, a good deal of stenciling. And a little girl from, let me see, is that? I don't want to be fibbing. I don't feel that to be collage. Is she over here? But if I cut her, she would be, um, she would feel like a collage. 
This all feels like uh, stenciling. I was experimenting, playing. And this is the uh, copy that I just made in case I decide I want to use her just because there's something about her. And then there was this that I found and I remember, vaguely remember doing it. I did it on uh, packing paper, all acrylics as you can imagine. And this is the, uh, the copy. And I don't like, I don't dislike this toned down piece at all. So, do we think we need her? Do I want her? Yes, actually, I do. I want her quite a bit. So, Two thumbs together are the answer to getting to getting your wish with uh, tearing collage. has the uh, white side of the paper because I pulled toward me instead of pushing away. She works, this works particularly well with that. I don't think we want any more of that. Do not. Do we want any of her floral bits? No, because this works with this. I'm going to stop and tuck this away also. This is a uh, an experiment in terror. Because, as you know, it's the first one that I've tried, and I'm certainly not trying to copy Anna. I just want to uh, see what I can do with her ideas. Or do I want this one here? Do I want it like that? Or do I want this shorter? I might just. Needless to say, that gets uh, kept. going to do it before I overthink. Let's do you first, sweet pea. This one down here. Right. 
this is nice and nice and dry. And this glue is, they don't call it super for no reason. It's also wonderful to put on because these lights hit it in such a way that I can see, I can see where I am. say that we have our uh, our basis, our focals, the basis being the watercolors and the focal being uh, the girl and this antique paper. And we need uh, something here, we need something here. How about, how about some uh, stenciling through, uh, watercolor through a stencil? Very pale. Or, or, using these brushes to apply some distress. I think I can keep it very, very paled out, very light. Okay, I'm going to turn off the uh, camera and uh, look at, at picking out some uh, some colors. I'll be right back. Well, as you can see, I've picked colors that I usually don't use. I don't use this one, but it's perfect for this. I usually don't use pumice stone because it's very pale, but it might work well here with this, etc, etc. And and quite a collect I couldn't resist not possible in this life. It has to go somewhere. And this because of the circles, and this because I like it, and this I don't know why, and these, not a clue. But I realized that this is this. So I'm just going to put a tad of this up here. And what am I going to do? Of course you know what I'm going to do. Now we haven't even begun on this. This is just the play bits. Just a little touch up here. That might be enough. Let's look. Oh, yes. Mission accomplished. Put that over here. Cover that up. I 
I might want to bring some of this down here. Just a little bit of neutral. Maybe just a little bit of neutral here. But what do we want for neutral? How about some how about some blue? Clean this brush. little bit and goes nicely with her hair. Let's just try this. You'll notice I'm covering the collage and the negative space. settles in the eyes. Let's just put this up here. A little bit lighter. Alrighty. milled lavender or tattered. I think we'll try this because as you can see there is a lot of this if you remember the color of the paint. I'm hoping my fingers are crossed. I think I'll take a, a fresh brush for that one. This was not the color I thought it was when I first when I first purchased it. This might not do. Let's check this one. This one is better. Now, the trick is ah. Oh, I love these brushes and this distress, these distress products because they uh, Just a suggestion. As I've said before to you, I don't know where I would be without that Dollar Tree paper.
we need we need something something we do. I would put it any place. If I was a tattoo person. That would be it. Now, however, should we bring a little bit of should we bring some blue up into that? No, no, no blue. Blue hair. Forgot. Blue hair. Can't do that. Just a tad of uh, green. Oh, strong stuff. But that's a strong green. Right there. So, how am I going to do this? Lightly enough. This moved up and over. Up and over. What do we got now? We're not going to need to uh, put ourselves through the Difficulty of uh, stenciling through a uh, uh, watercolor through a stencil. Mm -mm. Or this one. But what color? This one. This can be here. Just the littlest bit. down here. Get some 
hard to work because it's uh, it's so cut. That's going to be enough, I believe. Yes. Okay. And this one wasn't used because it's too large. And this needs to get put down on its paper. And this closed. And I'm going to stop while I mow and be back because, as I said, this is a many layered project. And yes, we have the watercolors out for a reason. So, if you had enjoyed step one on this project today, I would appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I would appreciate your subscribing to my channel. Bye now.